Olá a todos, boa noite. Vocês me ouvem? Só confirmando. Ótimo, obrigado, Ana. Obrigado, Adina. Bom, boa noite, pessoal. Muito bom estar com vocês aqui mais uma noite desse evento nosso, né? dessa semana do, de profissões do futuro, da experimento junto com a Into. Uma semana super bacana, recheada aí de conteúdo interessante, né? de profissões do futuro. Estamos muito felizes de estar com vocês aqui mais uma vez. Para os que já tiveram nos outros dias, vou me apresentar novamente, mas meu nome é Fernando e eu quero passar alguns recadinhos para vocês, tá? Antes da gente começar, esse evento, ele é um evento exclusivo da Experimento em parceria com a Into e a gente espera que vocês embarquem com a gente, né, com esses profissionais das universidades americanas que estão aqui com a gente, para conhecer tudo o que eles têm a oferecer. Eu peço que vocês verifiquem o áudio do dispositivo que estiverem utilizando, a conexão com a internet e peço também que utilizem o chat para fazer perguntas, tá? Então, qualquer dúvida, qualquer é, curiosidade que vocês quiserem saber, não só da universidade, mas da vida acadêmica do estudante universitário americano, fiquem à vontade que o chat está aí aberto a todo momento. E, ao final do evento, a gente vai disponibilizar um QR Code para vocês se conectarem com a loja mais próxima também, tá? E aí vocês conseguem dar continuidade na jornada com a gente. Antes de passar a bola para a Alden, que está aqui com a gente, a Alden da uh, University of Alabama no campus de Birmingham, uh, eu vou convidar meu amigo aqui, o Rai Aprigio, para se apresentar e contar um pouquinho dele para a gente. Rai, vamos lá? Vamos. Boa noite, pessoal. Obrigado a todos que estão aqui e tiraram esse tempinho para ouvir a gente falar. É, eu sou o Heimberg Aprigio, ou Rai Aprigio, como o Fernando me apresentou, né? O Fê apresentou. É, sou responsável pela INTO, que é um grupo de nove universidades nos Estados Unidos e oito no Reino Unido. A gente já está aí no mercado desde 2006, é, unindo alunos internacionais de todos os cantos do mundo às nossas universidades. Então, é, é isso. A gente auxilia vocês junto com a Experimento desde o momento da aplicação, que vocês vão aplicar para a universidade, até o momento que vocês e dá todo um auxílio por lá também. É, a gente vai falar um pouquinho mais disso, então é, a gente hoje vai falar com a University of Alabama at Birmingham, eles vão falar para a gente sobre é, engenharia biomédica. Alden, over to you. Hi, everybody, and hi, Fernando. Hi, Gui. Thanks for having me, Experimento. Thank you for coming. Of course. So happy to be here. So first of all, yes, my name is Alden Williams with the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And I'm going to talk to you today about biomedical engineering and health sciences, which I know is very popular. Um, and especially right now with COVID-19 being as crazy as it is. So first of all, I always like to start with just a little bit about the university because most people have never been to Alabama. So we are located in Birmingham, Alabama, which is about two hours away from Atlanta, Georgia, and a quick flight to most of these major cities on the eastern seaboard of the United States. People rarely realize that we have beautiful beaches here in Alabama. We actually share a coastline with Florida. So we have beautiful sugar sand beaches and, and turquoise waters. And also people don't realize that Birmingham is a city. We have about 1.2 million people or so. And so I like to show this photo, especially because the university is located here where these green trees are. And then you can see the skyline off in the distance. And then most important for today's conversation, our health system is right here in the middle. It starts with this sort of colorful building here and then goes all the way, all these darker brick buildings. That is our health system and our hospitals. So we have the third largest in the US. A little bit about our climate. We have a subtropical climate. So we have very nice weather. It's quite warm today. It's about 30 degrees Celsius or so. And um, it will only get warmer as it turns into summer here. We have more green space or more parks per person than any other city in the United States. And I am originally from the West Coast. So I lived, I grew up in Oregon and then I lived in Los Angeles and San Diego. And I was sent here for a project for work. And I was supposed to be in Birmingham for about four months. And I just had my five-year anniversary. So I really fell in love with the city and the culture of the Southern United States. 
which to me is my favorite region of the U.S. And it's really because of that Southern hospitality. I think the sense of community here is really deep and the people are so warm. They'll say, honey, oh my gosh, your family's in Brazil. Oh my gosh, why don't you come to my lake house for the weekend? Or let's go to the beach. They will want to adopt you. They will want to feed you. They'll, they'll say, honey, have you eaten? Do you know how to cook? Let me take care of you. And that's kind of the, the sense of um, being in Birmingham and especially as an international student. So these are some photos of things to do in Birmingham. In case you're curious, all of these things are with, within walking distance of campus. This top middle photo is the number one restaurant in the United States um, by the James Beard Foundation. And the Southern region in the US is most famous for our food and for what we call Southern comfort food or soul food. So it's, it's good for the soul. It's also not always super healthy for you at times. So I used to be a lot skinnier when I first moved here. And with that, a quick video, and then we'll get right into biomedical engineering. On this date in 1969, a university was born. A university destined to change forever. The subject is UAB. UAB? UAB. So when did it become UAB? When Birmingham shining... steel era had come to a halt, we were there, just a small light in a dark valley. We started at the bedside of a patient asking, how are you and what can we do to help? That's a place we've never left. You see, this city is our classroom. This is our lab, our stage, our study room, our dining hall, and our internships, they're on every block. This magic city is our home. And though her past is filled with both triumph and trial, we met hurt with healing and forged a new future for us all. We are working for better health for all of the population of Alabama. We're a research institution. So we don't just seek knowledge, we want answers. We invite every question to be explored, every voice heard, every opportunity seized. That invitation brought the best to Birmingham. And what was once a small light is now a bright skyline. Alive and thriving. Our people are from everywhere. They come here with a dream. And they graduate not only with a degree, but with a shared spirit. It's the spirit to serve, to truly make a change. And you only get that from working with what's real. No college bubble here. No gated entrances. No, we do higher education in the real world. Will you join us? Where the city is your classroom? So a little bit about UAB, just the basics. This is an urban institution. So we cover over 100 city blocks and that includes where students live, where you study, it also includes our hospital system and our whole research campus, which is right outside the door of your residence hall. We are a young university, just over 50 years old, and we actually have been named, as you see this diversity champion note here, this is a, a, an award or a designation given to only 14 schools in the US, and we are one of them. And just recently, UAB as an institution was named number four in the United States for diversity and inclusion as an employer. So we were the highest ranked university and um, just behind a couple of other Fortune 500 companies. And also recently, about three or four weeks ago, we were ranked the number one employer in the United States. And this is all by Forbes magazine. So that's a really, a really big deal. And I think when people hear of Alabama, including myself, uh, they don't always know what to think. Maybe you've seen Forrest Gump or heard um, Sweet Home Alabama, the song, but really this is one of the most diverse campuses you, you can experience. And so that's a pretty wonderful thing. Um, we were also ranked for two years in a row, the number one young US university and in the top 10 in the world. And this is really about the style of education. Many universities have been around so long that they get very traditional and sort of stuck in their ways. And there's a lot of bureaucracy. 
or as we like to say in the US, a lot of red tape. UAB is not like that. It's extremely innovative. It's very entrepreneurial. UAB encourages students to expand their ideas beyond the university and actually start a company with their idea or take their idea to the market. And this is very unique because if you don't know this already, as a student at a university, anything you do, any paper you write, any discovery you make is 100% belongs to the university. And UAB does not function that way. UAB truly believes that more minds are better than one. And they're not looking to take credit. They're looking to promote and to empower students. And so that's really why I decided to stay and, and you know, become a blazer myself is because I've never seen a university with such a refreshing outlook. And in case I don't mention it later, UAB does plan to cure cancer. We're working on it. And I think that with this mentality and this outlook, UAB really could do it. So first and foremost, we started as a hospital. This hospital is now the third largest in the US. It's in the top 4% of hospitals overall in the US. We have a number of different specialties and it's internationally award-winning. So if you haven't heard of us, there's a good chance that if you have a family member in uh, public health or maybe who's a doctor, there's a good chance they have heard of us. I should also mention that UAB has been a leader in how to handle the pandemic. And of course, it's you know still not completely under control and it looks different. It's coming and going in waves in every country right now. And UAB as a whole, has handled it quite well. Because of our health system, we have um, been able to vaccinate all staff and employees. So I've been vaccinated since February um, and we are vaccinating students as we speak. And it was actually UAB that developed the number one treatment for COVID-19 called remdesivir. Of course, there's no cure for COVID, but remdesivir does shorten the life of COVID itself and makes the, the symptoms um, decrease. So it's a wonderful thing. And this is all a product of the amazing amount of research that's happening at UAB. Overall in health and medicine, we have a number of majors and degrees that we are highly ranked for, um, including nursing. We have the number one program in health administration, and we also have a bachelor's degree in healthcare management. So you'll notice of course, today we're focused on actual health sciences and, and biomedical engineering. However, many of our degrees, especially business or computer science, have angles or they have options and tracks that are very health centric or they're focused on things like running the business of healthcare or the actual operation side of running a clinic or a hospital. So at the moment, UAB is ranked number 15 in the U.S. for federal research funding. And last year, we had $562 million in research expenditures. And this year, we have already way past that. What this means, and the way I think I want you to think about it, is basically there's about 5,000 schools in the U.S. And government agencies and private companies have money set aside to basically give to universities to help solve problems. And those problems include curing cancer, as a, that's an, an easy example. And it is UAB out of all those schools that these organizations trust more than just about anybody else, and especially on the health side. So the National Institute of Health funds UAB, um, sends a lot of money to UAB to donate for research and we are number eight. And for our biomedical engineering programs, we're actually number four out of all the programs in the US. So what that should tell you is number one, we are attracting some of the best faculty in your fields. Number two, you have access to these opportunities. So as a student, this actually gets transferred to you in the form of real hands-on applied learning. We have more research funding in other words, more interesting things for you to learn and to try and to actually try to solve real world than we have students. And that's not to say that we're not growing. UAB has grown just this year compared to last year, even despite the pandemic, we have grown by 10%. 
So that should tell you just a little bit of how much research is really going on. And I'll tell you more later about some cool things that we're doing in the field of biomedical and health sciences. So first, I'd like to start with asking yourself some questions and looking into the real difference between biology and biomedical, because biomedical is kind of a funny word. So biology is the study of any living organism, whereas biomedical, considering the way that it sounds, is related to both living organisms and medicine. So the, the definition overall of health science then would mean the application of science to health or to medicine, which includes things like the study of medicine and other health-related topics, biomedical science, biomedical engineering, immunology, and genetics and genomic sciences are all good examples, and these are all degrees that we offer at UAB. If you have questions, I would love for you to put them in the chat, but also please feel free to save them till the end where we have a little bit of discussion. So if you're a visual person, here's a closer look at the difference between these different fields. And it's true that there's a lot of overlap between each one of these fields, but to get specific, we'll start with biomedical sciences. So a biomedical scientist would be the one at the hospital who's maybe testing your blood. If you have a form of cancer and you're receiving chemotherapy, a biomedical scientist will be the one who's looking at your blood after your therapy treatment to see if it's working or to see if there's something we need to change. Biomedical scientists are also the, the ones that actually write the textbooks. And fun fact, by the way, the main textbook that is still used in medical school today is actually written by a UAB doctor. Um, and we do have a medical school and we have a top 50 medical school. So, you know, all of these things contribute to why this is such a um, destination for these subjects. So biomedical engineering would be more about the medical devices and technology, a little bit more of like the software of a computer and the hardware of a computer. So you'll be building things and inventing things like hearing aids or potentially a, a new wheelchair for a child or a new type of tissue. Immunology is all about the body's defense. So how does the body protect itself? And then genetics and genomic sciences is all about the body's inherited and adaptive makeup. So what did you inherit from your family or from your parents? And what did your body learn? So it'll be very interesting to see what our genetics tell us after this pandemic. And a lot of researchers at UAB are in the field of genetics and genomic sciences, and they are looking at things like, why does COVID-19 disproportionately impact or affect certain populations? What is it about their genetic makeup that potentially makes them more susceptible? And why, for example, do children react very differently to COVID-19? So these are the degrees specifically at UAB that are available. Um, if you want to be in healthcare but are not sure if medicine or dentistry or the traditional roles are right for you, or if you're not interested in studying for that long, these are some great, great careers. Um, and biomedical sciences is probably the most broad. And then biomedical engineering, which we'll learn more about as we go. And I apologize for the train in the background, but that's just further proof that Birmingham really is a city and we do have mass transportation. <laughs> So genetics and genomic sciences um, is learning all about ourselves, um, ranging from the color of your eyes and our height and things to the risk of COVID-19, like we talked about a minute ago. Immunology is going to be looking more at cells and organs and tissues and the function that system plays in protecting the body. So the classes and things you'll be taking or the career outcomes are all very different for these. However, you'll learn a little bit about each of these fields, no matter which one you choose, that you'll take courses that overlap. So here are some key questions that I always encourage students to ask themselves. I encourage you to ask yourself, how long do you want to study? How many years? Are you crazy about school? Do you want to be in school for 11 years? Or are you hoping to get it done a little faster? What subjects are you interested in? What classes do you like taking now? What are you best at? And then what type of career do you want? Do you want to see patients? 
Do you want to be in a laboratory? Do you want to be collaborating with others? These are all really important questions to ask yourself. So how long do you want to study? All these degrees start with a four-year bachelor's degree in the U.S. And then depending on if you just get your master's degree, which you don't have to, you can go directly into the field and start working after four years. But many students will choose to get a master's degree. So you would be in school for a total of five to six years. If you decide to get a PhD and become a doctorate, or if you decide to go to medical school, that's going to be absolutely a minimum of six years to 10 years. And if you just, depending on if you go to medical school, that can actually go even higher than that, depending on your specialty. So what subjects are you interested in? I encourage you to kind of just glance through these and see which ones jump out at you. Um, for biomedical science, you take a lot of general medical related science classes like anatomy and pharmacology, medical microbiology, immunology is more by more of your basics, biology, chemistry and physics, biology of microorganisms, genetics and genomic sciences will be more about genetic disorders, the genetic basis of human disease and things like statistics and bioinformatics because if you think about it, there are more and more databases with our genetic information and DNA that we're trying to sequence and understand and analyze. And then biomedical engineering. Are you interested in biocomputing, biomaterials, biomechanics? And those are all exactly what they sound like. The second part of the word and then the root of the word being bio. So how do we use computing or computers in a living organism? What types of materials are we using within a living organism? Or what types of materials could be invented and generated? Also engineering design and bioprocessing and biomanufacturing, because as you'll learn, a lot of what biomedical engineering does is actually build new parts of the human body. And what type of job do you want? As a biomedical scientist, we already talked a little bit about it. But those are going to be more of your traditional scientists, maybe working for a clinic or a hospital or a lab. You might be working in biotechnology. Immunology, those are your epidemiologists, okay? Your biologists, your lab technicians, potentially, looking at things like COVID. Genetics and genomic scientists, your genetic counselor, someone that you might actually sit down with and have a meeting with to talk about what diseases you might be more susceptible to as you, as you age, or maybe as you, as you start having kids, you might meet with a genetic counselor. And then biomedical engineering. Depending on which area you really enjoy of biomedical engineering, there's different careers you could have, but bio, um, biomaterials developer, super interesting one, rehabilitation engineer, how can you use engineering to help people with things like occupational therapy or physical therapy? So you're doing the real true kind of invention side of, of medicine. And really quick, how much does a biomedical engineer make? So the average salary or the median salary is over $90,000 and the highest best paid make about $120,000. And these are typically folks that are going to have a master's or a PhD if you want to be in that highest bracket. But you can see that even with just a four-year degree, you can be making upwards of $70,000. So a little bit about why choose UAB for biomedical engineering or what I can share with you as examples about biomedical engineering and what's happening here couple of things that I want to just get out of the way first are our two different types of degrees. I'm not sure if most of you are undergraduate or graduate students, but our Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Engineering offers three different concentrations. We have a fifth year master's degree where you can actually be accepted into the program, into a master's program while you're an undergraduate student. So in five years, you get two degrees. We have a really interesting neuroengineering minor that's very rare. Um, and then every student completes a capstone or a senior project 
thesis research project, which is what's happening in this picture here. Um, and so that is really going to give you an opportunity to focus on something that you're passionate about and actually present your research after performing it. For the Master of Science in Biomedical Engineering on the right here, this is a primarily research-based degree. Um, you're able to start publishing papers, which is a big deal if you're interested in a career in this field. And then our department chair is one of the best. His name is Dr. Uh, he goes by Jay Zhang, and he is literally the leader or the main authority in cardiac tissue engineering, which we'll talk more about in a second. But before I go, this National Institute of Health funding in the middle here being number five, again, shows that out of all biomedical engineering programs, this one is top 100, I believe we're 58 overall, if I remember correctly. But number five in National Institute of Health funding is very telling because this shows that not only do you have those opportunities that we've talked about, but the trust is here in this institution. So and that, that's coming from other scientists and other people specifically in the health sciences field. So as an undergraduate student, you can start doing research as early as your first year at UEB. You would earn your bachelor's degree with the level of experience and the level of research that most students don't get until they're in a master's program. And then, like I mentioned earlier, you can also enter your master's program early and get both degrees in five years, which would make you super hyper competitive no matter what you plan to do after you graduate. So UAB's hospital, this is a photo of our sort of main hospital entrance downtown, is internationally recognized, not just for medicine, but also for public health, especially, as you know, right now for COVID-19, and then biomedical sciences. Our undergrads have a 100% placement rate in research, which means that no matter what you want to study, no matter what, if there's a specific disease or a passion that you have, you can study that at UAB and 100% of students get a research position. And that is extremely, extremely rare. So as an undergrad, you're gonna get access to those faculty and you're gonna be able to, you'll be able to actually know how to write that research paper, but also present it at a conference, for example, which is just killer for your resume. So stand out from your peers, get that clinical experience and get that laboratory experience. We have over 20 university-wide research centers, which means that even as a biomedical engineer, it's possible that you'll be in the biomedical research facilities, but we have a ton in different areas where you could also very easily work with, including our AIDS research center. And this AIDS and HIV center is actually what um, originally developed, excuse me, the remdesivir treatment for COVID-19. So the reason being that there's similarities between different infectious diseases, including COVID-19 and HIV and AIDS. And so as soon as the pandemic started, UAB was able to show that this was a valid treatment for it and it has been used all over the world ever since. So again, AIDS, cancer, community health, this is another thing, especially for biomedical engineers, if you're gonna be working with patients more directly or working on projects with nurses and doctors on patient care and, and different um, tools and resources that have not been developed yet, this is a great, great place to do it because you have access to tons of different populations. Again, third largest hospital in the US, but also our region, covers several large urban areas, but also rural areas. So we even have a, a center for tropical diseases here at UAB. On the biomedical engineering front, we have four main areas of research, including biomedical imaging, implants and devices, cardiac electrophysiology, tissue engineering, and regenerative, regenerative <laughs> let's try that again, regenerative medicine. A lot of big words on this one today. Our research facilities, though, I want to point out to you, I mentioned earlier that we have a research campus that is right between the hospitals and the residential and sort of school campus for our undergraduate students. And this building right here, the Shelby building, is the main building where a lot of the biomedical engineering research happens. 
Um, but as you can see, we've got three major buildings and these are state-of-the-art world-class facilities. Something interesting that UAB has been working on is a tissue engineering. So I want you to think for a second about replacement hearts. So if you need a heart transplant, if your heart is no good anymore, it's broken, you need a new heart. It used to be that you couldn't get one. And then in more recent history, we started replacing people's hearts with animal hearts, specifically pig hearts. So that's what you get most times. And UAB is a leader on a completely new type of technology, <clears throat> which involves actually growing a human heart. So let's say you are having a heart condition and you know that in five years or a year, something you're going to need a new heart. Your body will accept that heart and won't reject it or fight it if it's your own. At least that's the idea. So we will take, or we, since I'm a biomedical engineer, UAB scientists can take your DNA, take samples of your tissue, and then actually in a laboratory, recreate your heart so it's ready for you when you need it. To speed this process up, in Japan a few years ago, um, a new invention was created where essentially these little printers, like a, a, a 3D printer that you see in this picture, essentially builds a new heart for you or prints a new heart for you using tissues. But the, the speed at which it does it is very, very slow. So UAB has recently found, and this is a PhD student here named Wesley. Wesley and UAB were able to create a new form of micro machine, which speeds up the process of printing an actual human heart over 100 times faster than we were able to do it before. So this is going to absolutely revolutionize um, organ donations and, and the need for organs and organ transplants. I wanna mention a couple of other areas that students like to study um, after biomedical engineering as a master's option. One of them is biotechnology. Again, like all of our degrees at UAB, it's very focused on internships and applied learning. So we believe that you should be a biomedical engineer or a biomedical scientist today. You should not wait until you graduate. We want you, of course, to learn the theories and learn the information and formulas that you need to know in the classroom. However, you should begin applying them right away. We believe this makes you a more engaged student. This makes you a better human, a better professional eventually, and allows you to actually truly learn and walk away from an education um, with added value. So there are internships included in all of our programs such as biotechnology. Um, we have a 95% employment rate for students that coming out of the biotechnology program are already employed before they graduate. 95% of them already have a job before they graduate. And then this program, what I like about it is that it's 50% science and 50% business. So let's say you love biomedical engineering, but you found that you really love talking to people and would really like to be maybe more on the business side. Maybe you want to work for a, um, a pharmaceutical company, or maybe you want to work for a medical devices company is probably more likely. Well, through this one year master's degree, students can actually learn the business side of taking an idea or taking a solution or a cure or a discovery from the laboratory to the market, so to the people. So these business classes are really, really useful and you can use this degree in a variety of industries. If you find that you love the science side, biomedical science or multidisciplinary biomedical science is another area where students often go after studying these fields. Um, and again, concentrations in pharmacology and toxicology, neuroscience, genetics and genomic science and immunology. So you'll see the overall theme here, um, but we are in the top to schools for health professions when it comes to research. And our School of Medicine is number 30 in the US for our research. So you can imagine having a hospital that's active in treating patients is, is great, but being on the forefront of actually changing medicine and improving patient care is monumental. Something else I want everybody to be aware of are OPT STEM degrees. 
So at the bottom here, you'll see the definition of OPT stands for optional practical training. And there's another one that's CPT, which is essentially where you get work experience while you're still studying as a student. But when you graduate as a US um, uh, international student, you will qualify for training for up to 36 months. All students get a full 12 months of extending your F1 student visa so you can go and get work experience or maybe continue your internship. You can work anywhere in the US. All students get 12 months, but for students who study STEM, such as any of the degrees that we talked about today, including biomedical engineering, you get a full three years. So this is a, you know, it's not something that's required. Of course, it's in the name, it's optional. But currently, even with COVID, UAB has 305 students on OPT, and we have about another 100 students starting OPT in the next three weeks for the summer. So I've been getting this question a lot with the pandemic, are companies still hiring? Are labs still looking to hire? You know, what, what are the OPT opportunities? We have not seen an impact um, on, on this, fortunately. There has been no decrease in the number of students who are able to secure these positions. And in the US and at UAB, the way that we look at research is that y'all are changing the world and this is very important. So this is a, an essential worker type position and essentially went back to work before most of us. Just really quickly, and we can um, go over this and get straight to questions, but for undergraduate students, the minimum you need is a 2.0 to get into UAB. Um, you need a minimum 50 TOEFL. And if you have either of those GPAs or TOEFL scores, you would do what's called a pathway. If you have a 2.75 GPA or a minimum TOEFL 77 or IELTS 6.0, you can go direct entry. Either way you go, you are able to finish your degree in four years. And then master's degree or a graduate admissions, you also have a GPA minimum requirement. And for direct entry, that's going to be a 3.0. For pathways, it will be 2.5. However, our entry requirements do, they go up for our TOEFL, you need an 80 TOEFL um, to go direct entry or a minimum of 65 TOEFL for a pathway program. Um, I know I saw a question or two about, about scholarships earlier. So I will say that at UAB, there's a lot of numbers on this page, but essentially it costs about 1000 US dollars or a little bit less per credit hour at UAB. And you will take about 15 or so, maybe 12 credits per semester. So that should tell you that's about 12,000 to 15,000 US dollars per semester. Um, our cost of living is quite good and things like that if you have questions, but we also offer scholarships. Um, these scholarships vary depending on your GPA or which program you go through. This international student scholarship though is really good. This is for students. All you have to have is a 3.0 GPA, and you will automatically receive a $7,500 scholarship for your first year. And if you maintain your GPA, you will continue to get that scholarship all four years. So that totals about $30,000, US dollars, um, which is, is quite a bit when you look at your overall cost for your degree. Really quick, I'm going to put in the chat a couple of um, a couple of links and I wonder if, okay, here we go. So first of all, this that you see on screen here is a great way for you to meet current students and see students who might be studying the degree that you're interested in. Um, you can chat with them directly, but you can also look at frequently asked questions where I asked questions and then our student ambassadors answered them. So I just encourage you to check that page out. And then to learn more about our actual degrees, you can go to this website here and search in any number of things. And with that, this is my contact information. My name again is Alden from UAB and my email address is just my first name at uab.edu. So thanks everybody. Thank you so much Alden for your presentation. Uh, pessoal, a gente acabou de soltar aqui um Acho que 
o Gui travou, vamos lá. Pessoal, a gente soltou uma pesquisa, enfim, se vocês puderem responder para a gente, ótimo. E vamos para as perguntas, né? Te vi que a gente teve algumas aqui. Rai, se você puder me ajudar com as perguntas, a gente pode passar para a Alden também, algumas... Claro, Deixa vamos lá. É, pessoal, só para reiterar, só queria reiterar uma coisa é, que, a, que a Alden citou aí no final, essas profissões, Biomedical Engineering, Biomedical Science, que ela citou, são todas STEM, né? STEM significa que você pode ficar até três anos depois que você se forma trabalhando nos Estados Unidos, tá? Então, vamos lá. É, is it possible to do Biomedical Engineering as a pre-med major? Can you get that, Alden? 100%. Every degree we talked about today, including, of course, biomedical engineering, is a very, very, very solid foundation for medicine. Perfect. Um, if, if I graduate in, in medicine in the U.S., can I work as a, med, as a, as a doctor in Brazil? I can get that, actually. Yeah, at, please. É diferente, é muito diferente, assim, a medicina, se você vai estudar num país, é para você trabalhar e morar lá, basicamente, tá? Então, você sabe que você quer continuar, enfim, sua vida aqui no Brasil, você faz aqui, se você acha que você quer ficar lá, etc, fica lá, mas lá é muito, muito, muito competitivo, por isso que a gente trouxe, a gente não, não quer falar de medicina hoje, a gente trouxe essas profissões alternativas, que tem também muita demanda no mercado, e que é, também são aí na área da saúde, né, como a gente é, citou. Né? Então, o que a gente quer trazer para vocês são justamente alternativas. Exato. E só um adendo, Rai, é, a restrição seria a mesma como, qualquer, como uma pessoa que tiver feito medicina em qualquer outro país, tá? Então, vai precisar passar pelo Revalida, enfim, todas essas, o, 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 o fluxo, as regras acabam seguindo a mesma linha. Perfeito. Tá? É, ela perguntou, a engenharia biomédica tem algo realmente relacionado à parte de engenharia? Sim, é uma engenharia, tá? Então, é uma engenharia, só que ela foca nessa parte de biologia, é, biologia e medicina juntas. Então, é uma, é uma profissão que você vai fazer para é, desenvolver, né? Então, a parte da engenharia é desenvolver é, materiais, desenvolver novos tecidos, como a Alden estava falando, né? Você criar né, um coração humano a partir de de células, enfim, né, você criar Exato. aparelhos, é, sei lá, para o coração, aparelhos é, de prótese, tudo isso é engenharia biomédica. Exatamente. É, a gente tem uma pergunta aqui sobre bolsas de estudos. Uh, Alden, she's asking about uh, scholarships for, for uh, sports or uh, players. Uh, is there anything you can add to us about scholarships for, for sports? Yes. Yeah, so at UAB, we have um, the highest level of competitive sports, which is Division I, and we do offer sports scholarships. My advice to any student interested in securing one of these scholarships at UAB or any school would be to make sure that you have basically like a portfolio for your athleticism for your sports. So if you have any video of you playing, if you have any awards that you have won or a resume essentially as an athlete, you're going to want to gather this information so you can present yourself to a, a coach overseas and you will need to contact the coach yourself because it's against regulations for them to contact you directly. You need to reach out to them and say, I'm interested. So, and if you're interested in meeting the coaches at UAB, I can send you their information. We do have tennis. Fantastic, Alden. Thank you so much for being here with us. It was a pleasure seeing you again. Obrigado, Rai, também pela presença. Pessoal, Obrigado. a gente vai ter agora a seguir uma nova palestra, tá? Então, um novo bate-papo aí com mais uma universidade. Contamos com vocês uh, no próximo link também. É, em, em sete minutos, tá? Às 19h55, a gente vai começar uma outra palestra sobre Computer Science e Conflict and Analysis Resolution. Bem legal. Participem aí com a gente. Thank you, Alden. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.